After I released my spaceship automation video a few months ago, I had a few comments asking for me to go over how to set up the circuit networks in a bit more detail. I guess I rushed through it a bit. I also had a few people ask me about building the combinators outside the ship to save space. So, welcome to Lawrence Plays for a spaceship automation update. To start with, I've built a very basic spaceship, however I've made it a little larger than I would normally be able to um, due to the spaceship structural requirements, but I've done this to ensure there's plenty of room to make what I'm doing with the circuits obvious. Hopefully when you're building one of these you'll be able to make it a little bit smaller and, and be able to fit all the circuitry into the same space. So the basic spaceship consists of a wall all the way around the outside to, to keep the atmosphere in. Uh, the wall is, can be broken by um, these spaceship clamps and by the e rocket engines on the back and also by doors so you can put in a spaceship door as well on the side of the spaceship to allow you to get in and out. In so at the front of the spaceship I've got some laser turrets, these are to defend the spaceship against meteorites as we're flying through, the, flying through space and some solar panels to power them. I've also put a substation in the middle of the ship to ensure everything has power. And down at the bottom I've got a couple of batteries to, to uh, store the power um, in case, because the, uh, the lasers tend to be a little bit bursty with their power demands. And at the bottom here I've got the engines which allow you to fly through space, plus the booster tanks. The booster tanks provide the thrust you need to get off planets or to leave space stations. And they also provide us a, a, a store place for fuel, because you can fit more in one of these than you could in the equivalent area of normal tanks. And so these are providing the fuel for the engines and for themselves as well. In the middle of the spaceship we have the spaceship console. This controls the spaceship, so it's got two, two parts to it. We've got an input on the left hand side, or um, where, the, where this cable is currently going to, and that's how you tell it what to do. And on the right hand side you've got the spaceship output, or the console output, and this passes out signals from the spaceship console telling you things like where you are and other, other bits of information like that. So in this case, for example, we've got a, a D for density of asteroids in this area, which isn't particularly relevant at the moment. A tells us the ship is currently anchored and anchored to zone number 35. The planet shows us that the current destination is the planet 35. Uh, again, that's not not particularly relevant here because we're landed, so it's um, we're not we're not on uh, in transit at the moment. We have an ID number for the spaceship console in case you ever need to identify a spaceship. The distance on the ruler is how far it is to your current destination. Minus two means you're anchored. Minus one means you've arrived, and then any positive numbers means you've got that far to go. And similarly with the final icon, which tells you your speed. Again, minus two means anchored, and a positive number will tell you that this craft is currently travelling at that sort of speed. So using these outputs and the inputs on the other side, you can you can then program the ship to tell it tell it what you want it to do and when. So let's start off with um, the, the basics. At the moment, I've got this constant combinator here outputting docking clamp signals. So these will tell the ship to when it gets to a place that it's to anchor using the onboard clamp number 10 and to anchor to an external clamp number 1. If we look down here, again we have this is clamp number 10 and this is an external clamp because it's outside the ship and it's got a number 1 on it. So this means that when the ship arrives at Norvis, this signal here will tell it to try and match up its internal clamp number 10 to the external clamp number 1 on the ground and so it will land in the right place. And This means when it lands you can have things like refueling pipes and supply belts feeding into the right place on the spaceship without having to worry about making sure you land it in exactly the right place manually. So the next thing to do is to tell the ship where we want it to go. I shall start off by placing a constant combinator in the, in, inside the spaceship like this and then programming it to tell the ship where to go and to actually leave. So let's have a look first in the um, in the Universe Explorer. I can now go and I can find Norvis Orbit, which is where I want to take the ship to. And if I look over here, then we see there's a signal. The automation signal for this is Planet Orbit 36. So I can remember that if I go over to, then go over to the Combinator, set that to Planet Orbit, and set that to 36. That will tell the um, when when we now connect this up to the in input on the on the spaceship console, that will tell it to go to Planet Orbit 36. We also want to tell the spaceship to launch because if you don't send a launch command it will just sit there going yep I know I'm supposed to be going to, uh, to orbit 36 but you haven't told me to go yet. So we'll set that as well. So we've got the planet orbit and the launch command. Those are the, That's all we need now but we need to make sure we only feed those signals to the spaceship console when we're actually ready for it to launch. So next thing to do is to get some decider combinators. I'll put down three of those for now. And these one, for each of these, we're going to set one of the conditions for when we want the ship to take off. So let's start from the top. We'll go, we'll um, set, if I connect the two fuel tanks together and, and then up to the, the inputs of all of these, I can set the first one, I can say, I only want to take, I only want to take off 
if we've got enough fuel. So we select the rocket fuel, liquid rocket fuel from here, and I've got two tanks which each have, each have 100,000 in them. Now I don't need those to be absolutely 100% full because fluid, with the way fluids work in Factorio, you never want to be waiting for tanks to be completely full. So let's say this has to be 180,000. There we go. So if the amount of fuel is greater than 180,000, then I'm going to output a single green tick. So one green tick signal. That means that if this so if this number gets gets up high enough, then we'll have the uh, the one green tick being passed over on the output. And as you can see, if I mouse over it now, it shows there's 199,000 liquid rocket fuel in there. So the output signal is one green tick. That's what we want. The next thing is to say, have we got the cargo that we want? So for that, we'll link up the storage systems on the on the ship. And on a proper ship, you'd probably be using a warehouse here because they, you can fit a lot more in them. But we'll say we'll fit that, connect that to the uh, the inputs of all of these combinators as well. And so we can see in here, there's 960 solid rocket fuel. So I can set this one to solid rocket fuel is greater than or equal to, well, it's, it's never going to be greater than, but if I set this to, to be greater than or equal to 960, again, we want to output a green tick. So now at, the, at this point, because we've got all of the things we need here, we've got all of the fuel and we've got all of the um, the rocket fuel in here, we've got two green ticks, one coming out of each of these. And in fact, if I take the uh, take some more cable and I hook these up, all these outputs up and link them to this thing, the, uh, the substation in the middle, if I mouse over it, you can see we've got two green ticks so far. The third thing we want to be investigating is where the spaceship is. So to get that, we need to use the output from the spaceship console. And as we see there, we've got the um, the various different signals on there. And we want, and the one we'll be interested in is anchored at 35. So again, if we take the cable from here, uh, link it across to here. So this cable is now joined to there, which is joined to all of these inputs. So there is one there is one cable essentially connecting, or one cable connection going all the way from here through this. Uh, store box down through the side of down through all of the inputs for these combinators and down to these tanks so they're all connected together as you can tell by the way the cable lights up as I mouse over it on the other side we've got another cable that's connected to the it's connected to all of the outputs of the combinators and to the substation but not to the input ones so as you can see here we've got those two ticks still so down here we want to say if a is equal to 35 then once again we want to output one green tick and so in this case now we've set up everything is set up correctly so we know we've got all of these things all of the things right so we see here we've got now got three green ticks on here so what we want to do next for this is we want to put in another combinator and we want this one to watch for tick green oops green ticks equals three and if so then we're going to output everything on the input and I'll explain that a bit more in a moment but as you see we selected the everything here which is the star on a red background and the input count which means pass the total number through from the input to the output so everything you're feeding into the input will be passed through to the output if there's three green ticks on the input signal. I then want to connect that to the input to the outputs of these combinators and we've now if I disconnect that one and connect that one up You'll see that once again we've got the three green ticks because that's all of these inputs are being passed over here. There are three green ticks, so they're being passed through. If I take some of the fuel out of here, then we'll see at the moment there's not there's insufficient um, rocket fuel, so we're not getting the ticks passed through. We're only getting two there, and we're only getting two there. Oh, now we've got three because there's some more's come through. But let's do that again. Since so now we're only getting two green ticks here, we're only see, and we're seeing no, so we're seeing nothing on the output here because there's less than three green ticks being passed into it, so it's not passing all of the signals through. So this is so this allows you to make sure that the ship will wait on the planet until it's fully fueled, it's got all of the cargo it needs, and the signal won't be passed through unless you're on that specific planet. But when that has happened, you then get the red wires out again, and you link up this combinator to here as well on the on the input side of this. You could link it to the output side of here, but it makes more sense uh, to, to link it up to here. In fact, it's probably worth moving that from there. If we put that over here instead, it makes it a little bit easier to read because then you don't have the cables overlapping each other. So we can now link that combinator, the constant combinator, to the input of here. And now we have signals on here saying go to planet orbit number 36 and take off. So if I link these into the input side of the um, of the of the spaceship console, then the spaceship would take off. However, once again, if I pick up that, if I take out some of the fuel from in here, then you'll see that suddenly all those signals have disappeared. Put the belt back in, and we'll watch that. And eventually, once the um, once the, the chest fills up, there we go. The signals have appeared again because the ship is now ready to go. So, if I now link this to here, 
the spaceship will immediately take off and start flying off towards the Earth, flying off to, towards orbit where I've told it to go. That's great. So that'll get me out there. Let's let in fact let's do that. So we'll take the cable, link from there to there, and now the ship is going, and it's, it's now set off because we've taken off. We've um, we've passed those signals into the spaceship console, so it's been told to take off. Now the one thing I've forgotten here is to set a speed instruction. So we'll go back to here, and I will always want the spaceship to go flat out. So we'll go in here. We'll set the speed of a of 10,000 because it's never going to go that fast. We'll configure that, and now the engines will fire up. The spaceship starts to move, and we can see over here that we're 10, 9, 8 seconds away. We're going. We've got a maximum speed of about 45, so which will probably barely make it to by the time we get there. So the ship flies over, and because I've got the uh, the automatic signal set up here for, in, for the clamps, we've automatically attached to this clamp, and this is another clamp exactly the same as the one down on Norvis, that's set to number one. So once again, the ship has tried to link up internal clamp 10 to external clamp 1, so we've landed here successfully. Now, we're going to want to go back home at some point as well, so let's put in some more of these combinators. We'll, we'll put them in over here for, um, for the sake of sort of simplicity. Now this time I only need two, because it's a slightly simpler job. But the basics are going to be the same. So we're going to link the same network up to the inputs here. So the inputs are, are we're using the same inputs on both spaceship, uh, both sets of combinators. And I want to on here. I want to set this to be if we're anchored at position, and position is number 36, which is the uh, the orbit. So over here we have anchored to 30, we have anchored to 35. On the new one, we're putting in anchored to 36. And again, we want to output one green tick. And secondly, we want to be watching the amount of rocket fuel. So we go in here. We say solid rocket fuel equals zero because that means we've managed to unload completely then we want to output an, another green oops we want to output an, another green tick and again just one of them so notice if there's zero zero solid rocket fuel then we output one green tick from there once again we link those to the input on the other on the next combinator and we tell this one if there are two green ticks this time this time it's two because we're only having two conditions on the input there then we want to output all of the input counts of absolutely everything. So this is the same sort of exactly the same idea here as we had over here, and we also want to put in a another combinator, a constant combinator here. And this one will say we want to fly to planet number 35, which is not back down to Norvis, and we want the spaceship to take off, uh, which is that signal. And again, so so once again we then link that constant combinator into the input side here. And then on the, we will we'll eventually link this over to here, but I don't want to do that just yet. But as you can see, if we look at the outputs here, we've got the output to saying go to Norvis. We've got the two ticks, that's fine, and to take to take off as well. So that should should now, if I link this back up to here, should fly straight back to Norvis automatically. Let's give that a try. There we go. The ship has departed, and because I set up the speed instruction last time, the ship is now automatically flying. Once again, we can see that it's only a few seconds travel to get to Norbis, so we'll give that a moment, and then uh, when we arrive, we should once again immediately land because of the um, yep, there we go, because the clamps are set up. So this is now completely automated. Once again, the ship is starting to fill up with uh, the solid rocket fuel from here in, into the into the chest. And there's quite a lot to go in, as you can see, it's about it's just over 10% of the way now. We've also got the, the uh, liquid rocket fuel coming in here to fuel to actually fuel the ship itself, and so these tanks these tanks are filling back up again. Inside here, you can see how much energy is required to launch and how much you've got. So at the moment it's telling me I need 228 gigajoules of fuel in order to take off, but I've only got 165 in the tanks. I can do another integrity check and it'll scan again and there we, there we go, we can now see there's enough of it. So now if we look at the combinators over here, we can see that this one is outputting a tick because we are on Norvis. This one is not outputting anything because we've only got 500 and something of the uh, solid rocket fuel. And this one isn't outputting anything because we've only got 150,000 of the of the liquid rocket fuel. So neither of these have reached their threshold yet. So, there, so we've only got one of these outputting a green tick. So over here we've got one green tick, so it's not passing the signals through. But once these fill up, once all of these fill up and we've got the right we've got the right quantities of everything we need, then we should immediately take off again because the signals will be available. So let's watch out for that. Okay, so the solid rocket fuel has reached 960, so that's um, that one's ready. If we now look at this one, we can now see there's an, a green tick coming out of here as well. So we've now got two green ticks on the input. We're just waiting for a little bit more fuel. And there we are. A green tick comes out of there. The spaceship immediately takes off and starts flying out towards uh, to, towards the orbit towards orbit again. And it will automatically dock and start unloading the rocket fuel, the solid rocket fuel from the warehouse. Once again, exactly as before, this this um, 
combinator here can now see that we are in, in um, Norvis orbit, so it's outputting one green tick. This one isn't because we're not on Norvis. So we're now waiting for this um, to drop down to zero. And when that when this hits zero solid rocket fuel left, then the ship will be ready to go back again. So as you can see, this we've now created a ship that will shuttle happily backwards and forwards between two different places. And we and we've got the number we've got the various different inputs here to, to tell you what to tell it when to when to go, when to depart. If I wanted to, I could put more of these combinators in. I could put an additional as many as many as I want in to, to, for the for the number of different things I want to test for. So, for example, if I had a ship that was using multiple different types of fuel or carrying multiple different resources, I could have these account up separately. So, I'd have this one might be watching out for ion stream, for example, if you've got an, if you've got ion engines, or it might be watching out for the amount of copper plates in the ship if you're transporting those as well. So you can you can monitor for as many different things as you like simply by linking all of these combinators together and then setting the number of ticks that are being watched for by this combinator to the appropriate number to make sure you uh, you leave when when you should. Just like that. So that's a bit more detail in how to set up a, an automated spaceship and how to how to how to configure all the programming. So I'm going to remove these for now because the next thing I'm going to talk about is going to be how to how to set this up with the connections on the outside of the ship. So the main difference here is simply going to be that we have the the, uh, the logic all put on the outside of the ship. So we'll start off by putting down a couple of decider combinators over here, like so, and then another one here with a constant combinator underneath it. And this should look very, very familiar because so far this is exactly the same setup as I was using inside the ship. So once again, we'll, we'll program the inputs here. So we want to watch out for the amount of liquid rocket fuel we've got. So when liquid rocket fuel is greater than 180,000, then we want to output one green tick. So that's the same, exactly the same as before. We're watching for when the fuel tanks are full. We also want to watch out for solid rocket fuel and when that is equal to 960, then we know that the cargo on the ship is full, so the ship's ready to take off. So we again, we, we output one green tick. So these two are working in exactly the same way as before. We, where they're watching, each one is watching one of the conditions for takeoff, and and will go and will output a green tick when it's ready. We don't need the third one on here that watches for when the ship is on Norvis, because the ship is if the ship is with this logic stuff, then we know it is on Norvis because that's where this, this the logic is. We don't need to worry about having this in a separate a separate check system checking for that. So over here, we want again we watch for the green ticks. So we say if you can see two green ticks then you know you're ready to go so I want you to output everything that's on the input exactly as before and then the things we're outputting through that are going to be a launch signal one and a destination which is orbit number 36 so there we go that's nice and simple the other thing I'm going to do slightly differently from before is I'm going to take the red cables on the, the, the again I've got the red the red network connecting up all of the things that are inside the ship so all its cargo is whether that's the fuel or the actual cargo and link that up. Now I'm going to link that up to the spaceship clamp wire pass through. So not to the main body of the spaceship clamp, but to the little pass through on the back of it. So we connect that up to there, and we can then connect another separate cable from here to the two inputs over here. We can connect the two, the output of those of those to the constant combinator and to the input of the other decider combinator. Again, this is exactly as before. So we get it. So now, because we're getting a pass through with the clamps, we're getting the signal showing what's in all of these. And if I link this belt back up again, then so we can start loading, then you'll see that we, in here we've got um, the signals being passed around. Here we've got the full amount of fuel, 192,000, because it's nearly full. That's being passed through to here along with 100, 110, 120 solid rocket fuels. Passed over to here and this one is outputting a green tick because we've got enough liquid rocket fuel. This one is outputting nothing because we haven't got full, we aren't full on solid rocket fuel yet. So these are going to be passed through to here and then eventually once both of these are happy and we've got the green ticks on both of them, we'll pass out the, uh, thir the 36 and the launch signal out to here. So I'm going to cut that again because I need to talk about this in a bit more detail. The other thing we the thing we need to do now is feed the signal back in from here and get back from here somehow get it to this um, get it to the spaceship console. Now we could just feed another red cable back to here, link it through, go through the uh, spaceship clamp through a, a pass through and up to here. And in this particular case, that would actually be okay. But um, because the signal that's coming out of here and the signals that go are going in, it, uh, there isn't any overlap between what what sort of signals they're passing. However. In the future, you might want to use some of the outputs from the spaceship console. So some of these numbers you might want to pass from here outwards. So perhaps because you, you want to use the um, the ship's ID, which in this case is number three, to check against at something. So it's good practice to use the green cables to go in the opposite direction. So we'll take from the output of there, we'll go back to this the uh, the pass the spaceship clamp pass through, and then another one that going from there 
the green cable going up to the input of the of the console and this means that we could have a red cable going from here to here and the signals from here like that 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 planet 35 mustn't be passed through because that would tell the input that its current destination was to be planet 35 so if you pass that through to here and up to here then it'll cause the ship to try and take off and then come back to where it is or maybe it'll or it'll get confused because it'll have two input signals and it won't know what to do so it's very important to make sure that those aren't uh, you don't link the two sides of the um of the console together so in this case that's why i'm using a green cable comes around here and feeds the signal in there so now if i link this back up again we'll start filling this back up up and when this gets to uh, 960 you'll see these number the all these all these flags will change we'll get we'll pass the signal through here and the spaceship will take off so let's let's wait for that to happen nearly there so you can see the red signals there are carrying the signals that are being taken out of the ship and when this gets to full they get green signals we've got there with all the launch signals so the spaceship launches and flies off to um, off to Norga's orbit at the other end it'll land as before and start unloading automatically now because we've taken all the logic out of the ship there's nothing to tell it to go back again so we need to do the same thing over here once again so we need a decider combinator that watches for when the ship is empty so we'll say when there is no solid rocket fuel and now at this point i'm just going to pass the input count straight through and i'll talk about that in as, as, as we put this together so what i also want to do now is have a another constant combinator this is going to have the signal to go back to norvis so planet 35 and a launch signal and so from here we can now take the the red cable from here so remember the red cable is taking the information from the uh, from the cargo on the ship so we'll link that from here to the input of the decider combinator so that knows when to trigger we'll cut this belt again so we've got so it doesn't ship doesn't take off before we're ready for it to now we could link the these uh, takeoff signals to here with the with with a green with with either a red or a green cable it doesn't actually matter um, because at the moment if we if we feed it through with a red cable then it'll put it onto the network that's going around here but not but it won't be passed up here because this is a green cable or we can put it in with a green cable and it won't be passed back to here because there isn't because there's only a red cable going across there. So I'm going to use a green cable because I'm thinking of green cables as carrying the signals for takeoff and the red cable as carrying the signals that we make decisions based on. So we'll link that to there with a the green cable. The, si the launch signal doesn't get passed through here because that's because you don't signals don't get crossed between red and green cables. We can then take another green cable and go from the output over to here. So this means that when we get when we get when we get the required signals on on the on here which so basically when this when this strong box is empty we get a zero ro solid rocket fuel being passed around here through the clamps up to here that will then trigger this to, to pass through the signals so we'll get the, the on the green cable we'll get the inf the, uh, the the launch signals coming from here in th through the decider combinator back around this cable through the clamps and then up to here so that should work let's test it so watching over here, we can see that there's still, once again, there's just the information about the cargo in the ship on the red side. And when this gets to zero, we'll see briefly, we'll see yep, on the green side, we see all of the signals we want for launch and the ship takes off. So this works nicely. Using this system, you can automatically have your ship shuttle backwards and forwards between two places. There is one fairly significant problem with this system though, and that is if you want to have ships taking your solid rocket fuel to multiple different places. So in this case, we've got a spaceship that will take the solid rocket fuel from Norvis to Norvis orbit. But what if we wanted to have another ship that landed in the same place and picked up solid rocket fuel and took it off to a different planet? We can't do that with this system because it's all, every ship that takes off from here is being told to go to, to Norvis orbit because that's how it's programmed. So now we're going to make a couple of major changes. So once again, I'll cut the belt over here so that the ship doesn't uh, doesn't take off when we're not ready for it to. So what we're going to do here is disconnect the um, the the launch signal and the destination signal from each other. So we're going to remove Planet Orbit 36 from there. So we're going to, so this ship now no longer knows about. The, sorry, the, the, the system outside will now tell the ship to leave when it's full of rocket fuel, uh, liquid rocket fuel and solid rocket fuel. That's great. It'll tell it to leave, but it doesn't tell it where to go. So instead, we're going to put in another constant combinator on the inside that says to go to planet number 30, that tells it to go to orbit number 36, like so. Now we need to take the output from here that tells us that we're on Norvis and use that to trigger whether this, pass it, whether this gets passed through or not. Put this one down here and we say that if anchor point is equal to 35 so as in if we're pl currently landed on Norvis then I want to output one green tick we then put in a second one here and say that if we see 
one green tick. Then we're to output everything that's, that's coming in on the input. We can now use cables to link up from the output here to the input of that one, the output of this one to here and to here, and then we should switch over to a green cable for this because of the, what sort of output it is, and from here up to here. So this now means that if we, we're watching for the number of um, we're watching for the output output from here to see whether we're on Norvis, and if we are from on Norvis, then we'll pass a one a green tick through to there. So as you can see, we've got the we've got the A is 35 being fed in, so we're feeding out the the green tick. We've got the green tick being fed in because we're on Norvis, so we're feeding out the um, the destination is 36. Now that's going straight into the computer here, and so with the destination is now set to Norvis orbit, but because we haven't got this launch signal from over here, the spaceship won't launch. So this will now work nicely and will tell the ship to launch at the point when it's ready. So we'll put, the, um, we'll put that back in there. And this is now also fully compatible with the system we've got at the other end. Because when the ship gets to the other end, this, this, this circuitry around here will be deactivated because we won't, be, we won't have an A equals 35. So we'll still get the go back to Norvis and launch that comes in from outside at the other end. So once this fills up, as before, You'll see that the uh, we've already got the destination signal here, but then that fills up. We get the launch signal as well. So the spaceship takes off and flies off to orbit, where it will, where it will unload and, and be ready to fly back again. The other advantage of the system having the destination fed to it all the time is that it means you can just click on the on the spaceship console and tell it to launch. Because if, if, if for example, over here, we put in a separate comb a constant combinator down here and said this is to be planet 35, to put that there so we don't we get rid of the 35 from there and then we link that into the inserter there so we've always got we've always got the planet we've always got the destination signal being fed to here as you can see if we look at this one we've got the destination signal being fed through but we only get the launch as a trigger the advantage of this is that now we've got Norvis set here so if I wanted to launch early because I don't care about waiting for all the fuel to be unloaded I can just hit the launch button and the ship will take off even though I've got 525 set in, in there still without me having to set the destination manually so that's a little bit easier. Now we land once again, and as this fills up, you'll see the system will run round and round in, in circles as, as, as you'd expect. So I'm just going to disconnect that. So I think that covers everything I want to talk about for now. I've gone over automating spaceships in a bit more detail, so hopefully you can now see how that works and where all the cables go. Then I've talked, because a lot of people were talking about it, I've also talked about putting the logic outside the ship. And because one person in particular was telling me I should really fix it and do things slightly differently i've also i've also broken out putting the um the, the location of the way where you're planning to go to separately from the uh, from the launch signal because it does make things a little bit easier I'll, I'll admit that so i hope that's been interesting i hope that's been helpful if you've still got any questions about how spaceships work let me know in the comments then it's possible there's been something i've missed out on but i'm hoping this has now got enough more enough extra detail in there that it will answer all of your questions so, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to come back for the streams and to, ca and to watch any other tutorials that are relevant on, on the channel. And I hope to see you in a future video. Thanks for watching.